Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Sunscreen is by far one of the most important products in your skincare routine, but for people with medium to dark skin complexions, it can be the most difficult one to find. On this episode of Sunscreen for Dark Skin, we are testing out the Anua 5-0 Mild Sun Cream SPF 50 Plus, PA++++, or pluses in there, to see if it is black girl approved. If you missed the last episode, I will leave it in the cards above. Make sure that you subscribe and click that notification bell so you get updated every single time we put an SPF in the hot seat. Without further ado, let's get started. As I'm reading this SPF, I'm keeping 10 qualities in mind. And at the end, I'm gonna give it an overall rating out of 10. Let's talk about the product. So this is the Anua 5-0 Mild Sun Cream with SPF 50 plus, P plus, 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 plus. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's four. Um, it's supposed to be for dryness and hydration and of course to prevent sun damage. And for skin types, it is for combination dry, normal, and oily skin. So basically all skin types. It says that it's a non-irritating physical sun cream that's supposed to leave zero white cast and help to improve the appearance of uneven texture. The product claims that it doesn't have um, any allergy causing ingredients, and it's formulated without the top 20 ingredients to avoid. We'll talk about the ingredients in more detail a little bit later on, but for now, let's jump into the application.
let's talk about the brand. So Anua is a vegan Korean skincare brand and on their website or on multiple websites actually because I had to comb through a few of them to find information about the company. Right off the bat I really do enjoy the effort that extra mile that is taken by this brand in their carefully chosen ingredients as well as just their overall packaging and feel as well. Um, they do focus on ingredients that is super important to me as well um, and simplicity which is refreshing. One of the reasons why they call this the 5-0 is because they remove the five critical reasons why people don't like SPF and, and that is something really important. I'm a huge advocate for SPF and I'm always talking about it because it is so important but I do know that because of the traditional ways that SPF have been created um, and apply on the skin many people are are not really wearing it simply because they don't like to wear it. The fact that they actually did a no irritation test that certifies these things is music to my ears and I think that's just like the extra mile which I really do enjoy about this brand. Overall this is going to get a point for me. Next let's talk about the packaging. I am a huge believer in simplicity. The more simple it is the easier it is to get because I don't really want to pay that much for packaging. I'd rather pay for the product right? So. The fact that this comes in a tube, it has a really nice dry, soft texture to it. And I think that's really, it's almost like an airbrush feeling the package gives. And I do think it's pretty compact. I think it's cute, it's great for travel. And of course, once you're done with the product, you can actually cut off the um, top of the tube and squeeze out every last drop in the inside. So I love that. That's gonna get a point for me. Let's talk about price and quantity. The way that I go about this is using the daily cost average. I do have a short video explaining all of that, so click that above. Um, generally speaking, this product does cost 27 USD. In Canadian, that's about $32 and it has 50 milliliters of product. 50 milliliters is a standard SPF that you're going to find. 32 Canadian is, I would say, around mid-range. So for the price, I mean, that's, that's not unheard of, okay? In terms of the dollar cost average, you can use this product for 42 days if you're using it every single day, once and it will cost you about $1.31 every time you use this. So that is a little bit more on the pricey side if you've been watching some of the previous videos that we've done on this. And that's why it's super important to look at multiples together to see how they measure up. Once we've reviewed 10 of these SPFs, I will do a recap video just lining them all together to really see which one is the best bang for your buck. So subscribe and click that notification bell so you get updated when I post that video. For now, we're gonna give price and quantity a point. On to the ingredients, my favorite part. Like I said before, I had a very, very hard time finding the ingredient list for this product. Um, it could be listed on the box, but it's all in Korean, so I don't know, it could very well be. Um, but I searched style Korean, I searched uh, Yes style, I searched style Vanna, and I couldn't find the ingredient list anywhere. I did happen to find it actually on um, Cause DNA, and it's one of those websites where you can put in the name of the product and it'll pull up a whole certification with all of the ingredients and whether it's hazardous, that kind of stuff, right? So um, I was able to find the ingredients and going through it, like I am actually pleasantly surprised by this ingredient list. They have a bunch of like fatty acids, so stearic acids, chill alcohol. These are really good moisturizing ingredients. They have a lot of hyaluronic, acid and derivatives like hyaluronate, sodium hyaluronate, and so on and so forth. Very, very moisturizing and hydrating ingredients, so I, I do enjoy that. That sounds like a beautiful cocktail. Like all of these ingredients are very calming to the skin, which is what I love. And I always look for Centella Asiatica when I'm looking for ingredients because it is super soothing to the skin. I'm really enjoying this ingredient list. I haven't found anything that is irritating. In terms of the SPF factor, as we mentioned, this one is SPF 50 plus, which means that it protects the skin against 98% UVB rays. This is the actual burning of the skin. So with this one being a K-beauty product, it does follow Europe and Asia's UVA PF factor so protection factor um, so it basically grades them on a scale of 0 to 16 plus to determine how much UVA protection you're getting here 
This one has four pluses, which means that it delivers over 90% of protection on the skin. If I didn't mention before, this sunscreen is a physical sunscreen and it has two of the best ingredients to protect your skin against the sun, zinc oxide, as well as titanium dioxide. Great coverage of both UVB and UVA. So you're covered here. For ingredients, this is gonna get a point for me application okay so on their website they do say that this applies softly with a moisturizing feeling without having to rub excessively so in terms of the application this is something that was in very high regard for me and i was like mm. I'm gonna be very skeptical about this. We're gonna see how this goes. Um, but generally, I do find the texture of this to be actually quite beautiful. It's 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 a cream, so it's a bit thicker. Obviously, it's not like a watery gel-like consistency. It applies really well. You don't have to rub in for too long. Um, in the video, the first half of the application section, you'll see that I applied this in a big chunk, which I feel like is a no-no. Um, when it comes to sunscreens like this, especially ones that are physical SPFs, I would re recommend, rather than applying it in a huge glob on your face, to apply it section by section. Um, you'll see that when I did it all over, part of the product is already drying. And so once the product already dries, if you try to rub it in again, it's not gonna work. I actually think this is what happened in the previous one that I tried as well, the one from CeraVe, because I did get some comments from people saying that it didn't apply like that for them. It applied quite nicely. So I'm gonna post another, maybe a short, about the CeraVe um, sunscreen, so I can really see if it's just application that is um, giving it that appearance. I did find that when I applied it section by section, so I applied a line here, rubbed it in, a line here, rubbed it in, it gave me a much better finish to my skin. So overall for application, this is gonna get 8.7. For finish, now this one does say that it's supposed to be very moisturizing to the skin. While I do feel that the texture is great when you apply it on your skin, it does does dry down and for someone like me who is going through a weird phase in my skin um, where my combination skin is turning a little bit more dry for some reason um, I don't find this to be moisturizing enough it applies beautifully it makes your skin feel nice and smooth it has a very soft finish and it almost makes your skin feel airbrushed but it does leave my skin a little bit dry um, so you want to apply a good moisturizer underneath. Taking into account that I personally like SPFs that are a little bit more moisturizing or give like a more moisturizing finish to the skin rather than a more mattified feeling, I'm going to give this a 0.6. Reapplication. So as I mentioned before, if you are applying this all over your face, it's 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 not gonna be a pretty sight. But if you do it section by section, it does actually apply quite well. And I, it was totally fine, it didn't pick up any product, it didn't budge anything around, and it didn't feel greasy at the end. Sometimes when you reapply SPF, you have to like blot it or use like a, a powder to make it matte. Because this one is actually quite matte already, I don't get any pilling, I don't get any moving around or anything like that. I think it applied really really well under makeup and I'm wearing it today as well it looks really really good and I don't have like any oiliness on my face nothing to blot off in terms of reapplication I'm both looking at how it applies without makeup and over makeup so I do think it applies quite nicely under makeup if you're doing it in sections but over makeup, it does leave a little bit of a, a whiteness to the face, just a tiny bit. I feel like you have to blend it out a little bit more. And when you're putting it on top of makeup, you don't have that opportunity. So for reapplication, I'm gonna give this a 0.6. White cast. This is probably the number one <laughs> aspect for me when it comes to choosing SPFs. The cast that it gives on my skin. I, I find that it, it does really blend in quite nicely but it leaves a little bit of a gray tint. It could just be because I'm dark skin. It could be. So I don't think that it leaves absolutely no cast. There is something there if you're melanated, deeply melanated like me, but for anyone medium and above, maybe even like chocolate and above, like brown skin and above, you won't really see much there. But once you get into the deeper, deep rich tones of melanin, you may see a little bit of a cast. For me, I'm going to give this a, 0.8 for white cast. Fragrance. So this is another very important factor for me and I am pleased to say that there is no fragrance in this product. Um, it does have an ingredient called Octil Do D Can Oil. <laughs> 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. But this one, um, it is a fragrant ingredient, but the purpose of using it in the product is not for fragrance. It is a wax and it's supposed to help the texture of the product. It just so happens that it has some sort of a scent. Almost like if you're adding like shea butter into a product, the shea butter is not a fragrance, but it has a scent. The reason why you're adding shea butter into your product is for the moisturizing factor. And I feel like that's kind of how that ingredient is. But the purpose of it is not for fragrance and I don't find it irritating to my skin whatsoever. So for fragrance, I don't smell anything on this product and I love that about this product. So that's gonna get a point for me. Flashback. I did find that this gave me just a tiny bit of a halo on my face. If you're gonna apply this on top of your makeup and then take a photo, you're gonna get a little bit of a cast. Um, a little bit of a, a flashback, but if you're just applying this as your first base, putting makeup on top of it, you're not gonna see a flashback. So that is gonna get a 0.7 for me. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Comment down below and let me know if you've ever tried this new SPF. I would love to hear your thoughts. What are some other sunscreens that you love or others that you want me to try? Leave them down below as well. Remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos. And as always, stay gorgeous, stay fabulous, and I will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video. Bye.